कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभा गिरीवर धारी जन रंजन यमुना तीरावन चारी जगन्नाथ बृहस्पुद्र महारानी की श्री श्री गौर निताई की शेला प्रभुपाद की समावेत गौर भक्त वृंद की कलयुग पावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की ओम ज्ञान तिरंद ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुवन्मील जेन तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरो वैष्णवांश श्री साग्रजात सह गण रघुनाता तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पर्जना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सह गण ललिता श्री विषाता नमा ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे वाछाकलतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ऑल द लिविंग बींग्स इन दिस वर्ल्ड दे आर ट्रांसमीटर्स दे आर ऑल्सो रिसीवर्स वॉट आर द ट्रांसमीटिंग every living being is transmitting a certain frequency and they are also receiving uh, other frequency now for example if you put a plug into your socket then you receive electrical energy correct no like uh, you have your mobile is going to have 20% charge it's going to almost be drained out you connect a plug gradually it becomes 60 80% 100% <laughs> then it's like fully charged then it you use it very well in the same manner 
that the living beings connect with someone and they receive a particular type of charge, either material charge or spiritual charge. For example, if people go to you know clubs, you know, parties, you know, cabaret dances, discotheque, that they receive material charge. By going to these places, the living entities are aggra- their passion gets aggravated and they become more passionate. A normally walking person doesn't remain walking, he just becomes more passionate in those places. Similarly, you go to the temple, you ring the bell, you hear the shloka recited, arati is performed for the Lord, lamp is given to everybody, and kirtans are going on, prasadam is distributed, people are folding palms and wishing one another. So you get some spiritual charge and you go to those places. <coughs> or you can say pious charge. But when you meet uh, uh, saintly devotees and very advanced devotees, uh, when you connect with them, then you get spiritual charge. Hmm. Like Mahad, Mahadanugraham. Hmm. Now, Prahalad got Mahadanugraham from whom? Huh? From whom? Prahalad, don't answer, I want asking them. Prahalad Maharaj got Mahadanugraham from whom? Huh? Narada Muni, yeah, Narada Muni. Similarly, Yenakashbu got a Abhishab due to Mahadaparad. To whom? No, Prahalad comes later. Hiranyakashipu became Hiranyakashipu not because he was hurting Prahalad. Mm-hmm. To Chatush Kumaras, when he was Jai Vijay. <laughs> Jai Vijay committed offense to four Kumaras, so he was cursed to become Asura. Therefore, he became Hiranyakashipu. So, by Mahadaparad, there is a high negative charge comes on you. Huh? Tremendous negative charge. Huh? Negative energy comes on you. So, he he manifested asuric propensities. So, Uti, Uti is the song canto. Uti is actually the vigor which comes. There are two types of Uti. One is spiritual, one is material. So, Hiranyakashipu committed Mahadaparad and he got asuric Uti. And Prahalad was a blessed child. In his mother's womb, he got Mahadanugraham from Narada and he got spiritual Uti. That vigor, he got that. So, in this way you find uh, you can connect to your great soul and you will be able to draw that uh, spiritual energy from the personality and then your energy level increases uh, by that. Now, how can we get that energy from great souls? For that, your frequency and that frequency has to match. Then only there is a resonance principle. Otherwise, not. Otherwise, you get very little benefit. Like sometimes you'll see there is one dog running in the road, another dog comes, ting, 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 it waves the tail, you see. Both are waving the tail because frequencies are matching. <laughs> Correct, no? Because so they are, they are uh, sending out frequency in what, what platform? Material platform. This fellow wants to do something and the other dog also wants to do the same thing. They vibrate at certain frequency. Correct, no? Wagging the tail. Or your master is taking out a biscuit to give and the dog is wagging the tail because he wants to eat something and the master is also wanting to give something. So their frequencies match and the exchange happens. Similarly, our Sri Prabhupada went to Bhagavan Sutta You know, he presented something and Bhagavan Sutta presented their wavelength, their frequencies matched and the Prabhupada could draw from his association. And what is the proof? He said, oh, the message of Lord Chaitanya is in the right hand, safe hands. He was very happy. On that very day, I accepted him in my heart as my spiritual master. That means frequencies are magic. So, uh, when everybody is emanating some energy, you are emanating, I am emanating something, everybody is emanating energy. But we all are emanating either material energy or spiritual energy. And in spiritual energy also, when we are emanating that energy, our, uh, uh, that wavelength, somebody has 20 cycles per second of brain, you say, no? Different wavelength everybody has. So, when we emanate that frequency, uh, if, we, if we can increase that energy level, spiritual energy level, then we experience relish and we also can uh, distribute that relish. Like your Annamaya frequency you are emanating, or Pranamaya frequency, or you know, Manomaya, or Vijnanamaya, <coughs> Anandamaya. Depending on what frequency we are situated in, with what we are emanating, based on that one 
is a receiver and one is a transmitter. If you are in a high spiritual platform, then the reception also, the spiritual vibration becomes very easy. When I am very low in the platform, you know, Guru is talking, Lord Chaitanya has ecstasy and esoteric and probably and why you be asking, what time is Prasad? I am looking at the clock. But he is vibrating at Anamaya frequency. Guru is speaking at Anamaya frequency. So there is no match only. Correct? No? And that is why you find that we may be coming in association, but it doesn't affect us so much. Because there is a very big frequency difference. So when there is a frequency difference, then what to do? Shastra says, don't worry. Uh, keep surround, surrounding yourself with uh, spiritual energy emitting objects. So deities are emitting spiritual energy. Prasadam is emanating spiritual energy. Holy name is emanating spiritual energy. Devotees are emanating spiritual energy. Surround yourself with these things and keep yourself away from those environments and people who are emanating negative frequencies. This is the first step. So, by, by doing that, at least you are exposing yourself to a place where slowly, slowly your energy level is likely to increase. Today you may not be receptive. Tomorrow you get one slap from Maya, then you become more receptive. Then you may receive the energy from others. That is why keeping ourselves in a good Sangha is always very good. Plus we are also chanting the whole name. Chanting the whole name is actually an earnest prayer to Krishna and uh, Srimit Radharani that I have come here to this place so that I can receive that spiritual energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have come here so that I can purify my heart. I have come here so that I can experience and uh, practice love for God. Huh? I want to experience it. I want to practice it. So, please kindly purify my heart. So, this is a prayer. So, uh, more things are uh, achieved by prayer very easily, if one is sincere. So, we are putting ourselves in a spiritual Sangha and we are also offering prayer for that spiritual Sangha to take effect. Huh? Then it can take effect. For a period of time, it will take effect. So, from this energy level, just like a charger, when you put 20% charge. It's almost about running out and then become 30, 40, 50. As your charge increases more and more, spiritual charge increases, you start vibrating the whole name very in a thrilled manner. You are ecstatically situated and become cheerful. And everybody can see, everybody around you can understand you are doing well and you also feel very healthy in your consciousness. And that is that is the purpose for which we are all here now. But no other purpose. You know, but sometimes boys come together, they think but food is very good here. Habits are very good here. People are gentlemanly. So many reasons people come. But the most important reason we are all here is to increase our spiritual energy by spiritual association and then start vibrating that frequency which will match with the frequency of the spiritual world. The frequency, act- activities, attitude, mood and the ambience and the ethos of the spiritual world. When we can match with that, then we are there. Then we are there even though we are here. And the main thing that takes us to that plane to begin with is the standing of the Holy Name. In the morning I was speaking about how uh, in this world uh, every living entity is uh, simultaneously a receiver and a transmitter of different frequencies. So, you will see that there are people who are in Tamaguna or Rajaguna or Sattvaguna or Vishuddha Sattva. And in, uh, in the situation in which they are placed, they emit a certain type of vibrations. So, uh, and those who connect with those vibrations, if they are able to connect with that level of vibration, then people, that's what you call as association. <laughs> when two people come, uh, uh, in encountering with each other somehow, like Ajamila is going to the forest, he is seeing a very bad sight of uh, Shudra, Shudrani embracing and kissing. So he has some old vasanas in his mind. So as soon as he sees that sight, immediately he is vibrating with that frequency. So then there is a resonance principle. So he already has some old karmic account of degraded consciousness, which is uh, matching with what he is currently seeing. 
then uh, the old uh, vasanas in his mind become more vitiated more aggravated uh, to a point of expanding that more then the result is that his energies are flowing in the wrong direction after that you see that see energy is like water you can direct it in which direction you want to direct it like you know you put water to through a cylindrical tube it will go through that in that direction or you divert it in another direction you can block one side and then you can direct it in that direction so we say energy flows or intent goes so his intent went in that Uh, wrong direction in the forest of a low class woman and low class man embracing kissing so then his um, first the mental energies go after the physical energies follow that that's why i told you energy flows where intent goes and what is the proof for that when he came home he was continuously thinking of what he saw in the forest and uh, he was actually Uh, multiplying the impure thoughts in his mind uh, by repeated contemplation hmm. so one thought becomes four thoughts four become 40 thoughts 40 become 400 thoughts and in this way the impure thoughts became multiplied in his mind how they become multiplied uh, like one thought is what he saw in the forest hmm. then he makes plans take sankalpa no? that oh you know if i bring her you know i can marry her i can drive away my parents i can drive away my chaste wife and uh, uh, i will enjoy her body her body is like this her smile is like this so thoughts about her thoughts about what he will do with her and thoughts about how he will make the arrangements all these things are thought, different thoughts so in this way his impure thoughts multiplied uh, and then in this way as the uh, thought energy Uh, multiplies more and more and more then um, that is turned into plan of action hmm. after that and the result is you will see his bodily energy also started flowing in that direction after that hmm. he literally did everything that he thought generally people when they act it is not that they suddenly act like that hmm. the action is preceded by some thoughts and those thoughts are often times well con- contemplated thoughts for a period of time therefore somebody has to suddenly it happens suddenly nothing happens everything is well thought out before things are actually planned first in the head and then they are acted out just like you want to construct a building you know first the desire arises in your mind i want to have a independent bungalow like this with a nice compound wall everything you just look at some building take a snapshot of that and put the photo in front of your table and keep watching it and then you get money or card and earn money and then you get a, a civil engineer to make a blueprint so first the thought or the desire then the blueprint then comes the actual building and this is true for everything huh? this is true for everything so whether good or bad for all the things everything begins with a thought only so uh, our energy that whatever energy each of us possess um, it is very precious and uh, unfortunately in the modern modern uh, scenario youths uh, um, they allow themselves to be dictated by infinite number of distractions so we are we are really tossed like a football hmm? kicked and slapped and beaten and punched and buried practically huh? in modern times and uh, you may ask uh, these are all educated boys huh? intelligent boys many of them are from very very nice institutes and everything how they can be easily distracted and uh, tossed and uh, all these things one may ask you that is because again the point i told you the frequency they have the more you go up for example you go to satguna uh, you free yourself from being tossed by the the world around you huh? and as you come down to rajaguna you uh, start uh, there is, because it's a different frequency this yes. huh? in this you will see in rajaguna what is rajaguna rajaguna is a platform of competition uh, envy uh, anger uh, impressing others uh, seeing glamour showing glamour money 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 huh? 
chase after the money and uh, attraction for the opposite sex so all these things are the because you will see that not only the rajaguna every person is surrounded by an aura hmm? that is a, like a ethos uh, everybody carries you will see for example uh, uh, some people have a uh, political aura around them hmm? they are always uh, thinking these christians they are converting these muslims you know they did this in our country yeah they did that in our country they this kind of aura they have they are always thinking any in terms of enemy and friend hmm? they are thinking that we will do this we will take that action Uh, we will rule we will not allow this so there are always that vibrations are around their head everywhere so and there are others there all there are is all all the time about ipl india pakistan match this cricket match kohli sachin tendulkar you know there is that all the time about sports 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 all the time head is clouded with sports ideas somebody head is clouded with political ideas and somebody is it is clouded with nasty dirty thoughts about women huh? you know this actress that actress this hollywood bollywood huh? and uh, all about the body of women huh? man woman relationship all the nasty dirty activities impure like a dog dogish mentality you know actually if you if you if you read propas conversations and all propas is very, very open about it huh? he says what is this civilization huh? it is a prop, um, you will see in some of the comments proposes is vagina leaking civilization proper rights huh? you know actually you will see that when a man becomes degraded you know he is uh, embracing and kissing all the dirtiest parts of the body huh? he say so shankaracharya asked uh, in one of his commentaries he says naraka kaha he says ko naraka huh? what is hell he is asking a question and then answer is giving narako hi deha ha he says this body itself is narak he says huh? this body itself is hell why because if you read the about the 28 hells in the fifth canto uh, it talks about how your uh, soul is conscious soul is sometimes put in a uh, payoda there is a kind of uh, stool and urine uh, lake in which the living entity is thrown you must have heard about it correct no you can imagine mucus stool urine in the midst of that you are thrown hmm? and not only that living entity is uh, uh, floating in that he is also eating that hmm? either it is it so now we will say to 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 what horrible description it is but that is what man woman do when they come together hmm? and they become intimate and they become sexually attracted to each other that's the dirty things they do hmm? that means therefore is a ko naraka is a narako hi deha he says this body itself is hell it is so some people's head is clouded with this kind of and not only that when they are uh, thinking of such dirty thoughts they aggravate those thoughts by more and more by multiplying those thoughts by watching videos by watching uh, magazines uh, by uh, connecting with man woman and then indulging in such activities and they, in this way they aggravate the situation on the other hand uh, you, you will find those who are in kamaguna uh, these people resort to all kinds of uh, smoking and drinking and drugs and uh, now adding insult to injury there is also homo relationship now huh? yeah. you know there are even in boys and premier institutes like iits you know they go to the net and connect with somebody on some other man uh, <clears throat> and they call the man he comes to the room and they help one another to uh, release orgasm and get some pleasure in that foolishly as if they are doing something very secretly all the cats dogs all over the world are doing the same thing <clears throat> but in this way you will find people's heads are clouded with surrounded with some kind of vibrations and every living being is carrying such vibrations and those who are in sattva guna those who come to sattva they gain more freedom because their thought process because uh, sattva person is brahminical brahminical means a man of letters huh? uh, man of letters means uh, they appreciate pristine things pure things sublime things huh? uh, they naturally have inclination to go to a temple bow down to god ring a bell you know chant some shlokas read some poetry hmm? and uh, read some philosophy uh, 
Hmm. After they read philosophy, it uh, touches their heart. Then they contemplate on what they heard uh, and they participate in festivals and render some seva, do something selflessly for the world. Uh, so these, these kind of vibrations are uh, in their head and they are generally cheerful and they are friendly and they are uh, understandable. They are not aggressive. They feel that God has put all of us here. We all should share and enjoy. We should not uh, exp exploit other living beings. They have sympathy for the poor creatures like cows and other animals. Their eating is simple, their lifestyle is simple. They become easily satisfied with little facility. You will see that. So then they carry a certain type of uh, vibration also around them. So in this way, every living being is vibrating at a certain frequency. Tamaguni, yeah? Rajaguni, Sattaguni frequency. And, uh, and their energies uh, will be directed uh, as per what frequency they are emanating and what frequency they are connecting with naturally. For example, a yeah, sattvic uh, person uh, connects with the sattvic atmosphere very easily. Mm -hmm. A rajasic person connects with the rajasic atmosphere. A tamasic person connects with the tamasic atmosphere. Mm -hmm. In general, you will find this. So, uh, like, uh, for example, in your radio also, radio or TV, you know, if you connect to a certain channel, you get certain type of songs, correct, no? Like one of our devotees went to Jagannath Puriyatra and uh, uh, there were like 8 lakh people, you know, the grand road and all dancing in front of the three chariots and there were practically stampede, such heavy crowds, correct, no? People are sweating and sun is hot and sometimes it rains in between. So this devotee thought, uh, this is too much, huh? you know, almost half the Rathyatra, he survived. After that, he said, let me go to the room. And uh, uh, then he went, went back to the room. Then uh, he thought, let's rest for a while and then I'll come back. So he went to the room. So it was a lodge where everybody was put. So he went to the room and then he lied in the bed. And then he saw the TV. So his mind uh, thought that, oh, I heard that Rathyatra, they show it in the TV also, same day, correct now? It's like an online transmission. Eh? They do that same time. So he thought it's very wonderful. So immediately he took that, uh, you know, control, remote control and opened the TV. So he put on the Rathyatra and then he could see the Rathyatra. He thought, this is wonderful. Eh? Rath is going, the commentary, running commentary is also going for Jagannath Brachabhadra. So he watched for about five minutes. Then immediately, you know, the mind said, I, I'll just see what is there in other channels. Then, like that, he moved it. And then he went to some channels where some rock music was going on. Huh? Yeah. Then another channel, he went, some man woman thing is going on. So, he got frightened. Again, he came back to the theater. Yeah. After five minutes of the theater, again, there's temptation. Again, he went back to the other ones. So, within a few minutes, he, he was seeing so many other channels were pulling his mind because he is not yet purified devotee. Um, still the old impure vibrations are there. Um, although he has become a devotee now, some kind of devotee now, um, the old uh, impressions are still present in the mind, so the mind was pulling him. So as he was watching more and more of the other channels, his mind was getting more polluted and more degraded. And, uh, and he was becoming more lusty. So then suddenly something hit him hard. He thought that I'm I'm lying in the bed in which place? Jagannath Puri. It's a holy place. And today is what day? Yatra day. And we have come on Yatra. And all the devotees, they're all on, you know, on procession. They're pulling the rat and everybody is dancing in front of the It's a first of all a mistake on my part to leave that and come. <laughs> okay. Nobody is going to catch you. If you leave, you can always come back, take some little rest and go back. But instead of participating in this wonderful festival for which I came to the Dham, I am coming to the Dham and contemplating on some impure activities. How unfortunate I am. So this devotee said, I am coming to see God, but I am behaving like a dog. So he said, the main reason for this is I have pulled myself out of association and uh, I have allowed my mind to be distracted by um, various uh, impure uh, thought process. So my mind is like a ball which is being tossed by various impure thoughts now. 
and I am finding myself helpless. And the helplessness is due to tamaguna. Tamaguna actually is a state where we are, mind is not steady at all. Huh? Mind is tossed like a football. Hmm. So I should not remain in the room even for a moment more. Huh? Let me immediately go back. So immediately he shut off the TV and he locked the room and ran back to the you know, theatre again. So fortunately this devotee was uh, having some amount of spiritual reserve huh? by which you know the weak mind didn't become a wicked mind. Rather the weak mind became victorious. Hmm. But in other cases you find uh, people's weak mind becomes wicked. Hmm. Like Dhritarashtra had weakness due to attachment to Duryodhana. But so his weakness became wickedness. Hmm. He became so wicked towards the Pandavas. And the end result was all his sons were destroyed. Hmm. So because he allowed the weak mind to become more and more wicked. Hmm. Now, Ajamela also, he had a weak mind when he went to the forest. Mm. So, when he looked at the dirty site. Mm. But uh, at that time, he was innocent. Huh? He was simple and innocent. He was a Brahmana. But then after that, when he came home and he uh, increased the number of impure thoughts in his mind and then made a solid plan because generally what the mind does when it contemplates, it ultimately assembles some few words and then it puts it on the screen of the mind and starts focusing on the uh, plan of action. Yeah. This is what I am going to do. Eventually, your, your thought process solidifies into a few statements, what you in, intend to do in your life. This is what I want to do. Huh? And then mind starts focusing on that. And that is the point where your thought turns into action. Huh? So, <clears throat> and that is where Ajamila can be said to have become wicked. Huh? Because... If he was not wicked, what he should have done? He should have immediately run to his father and told, Papa, I went to forest, I saw a dirty side, my mind is extremely disturbed. I really don't know what I should do. He was already married to a chaste wife. Yeah. And he had religious parents also. If he went and admitted, then immediately father will take him to some Vaishnava guru and Vaishnava guru will give him some chastisement, some correction, some mantra he must have given him to chant given him some teachings, yeah? some positive inputs he could have taken and nullified the you know, negative thing. So Shastra say that when our mind is demanding something unreasonable, we should chastise the mind. We should chastise the mind. Because when you chastise the mind and deny the mind, like how do we chastise the mind? By chanting more rounds. <laughs> Instead of 16 rounds, chant 25 rounds. Yeah? That's the way you chastise the mind. Because... Uh, what is the meaning of chastise? See, chaste means loyal. Chastise means becoming more loyal to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Chastise the mind. Huh? Isn't it? Which, uh, you, if you want to become more loyal to the Lord, then you chant more rounds. Huh? Do more devotional activities. Like this boy ran back to the Rathyatra again. And no matter how much it was sweating, how much he was hungry, and how much he was tired, he didn't mind it. He remained with the devotees and he was saved. Huh? from contemplating on anything more uh, dirty or worse. It was saved, isn't it? So, therefore, <clears throat> uh, ultimately, every jiva, he is allowing his awareness uh, or conscious awareness to be exposed to different stimuli around you in this world. Then. So, here is the real thing in your life. You, uh, Krishna does not take away this free will. This is one thing he has left it with you. Huh? Every one of you, you have the free will. God, Krishna is so kind that although he is infinitely powerful, he doesn't take away your free will. So you have to use your free will to take your conscious awareness and give exposure of that to positive stimuli, which will actually take you to a higher and higher frequency. Huh? From Tamaguna to Rajaguna, Rajaguna to Sattvaguna, Sattva to Vishuddha Sattva. Huh? And in the beginning, it may be artificial uh, when you try to connect with a higher plane. We are in a lower plane. We can uh, identify with something dirty very easily because we have been in this material world for, for a long time. But when you try to identify with something on a higher plane, many times uh, you know the higher things are good, but they require some effort. Just like if you have to knock an electron and take it to a higher state of energy, you know, it takes effort, correct? No? No. <laughs> 
then uh, and if you leave that electron then it releases the energy and comes down correct na no? it comes down it goes up and then it comes down similarly the going to higher energy level requires some amount of effort that is actually the chesta huh? the effort so that effort becomes easy when you live in the company of devotees huh? because you get support from uh, other multiple positively devotees with positive energies huh? every devotee is like a unit emanating some positive energy as told you, everybody is emanating energy and frequencies huh? so connect to the and develop a desire to connect to the right frequency satvik and shuddha satvik huh? frequency and then uh, direct your energies in that direction huh? so there is one full chapter in the bhagavatam 11th canto about the three modes of material nature if you read that chapter you will get more information about this lord krishna speaks to uddhava huh? about these things so and uh, uh, you you will you will observe that i was telling about dhritarashtra now if you see dhruva maharaj for example you know his mind was uh, distracted by his stepmother who spoke very harshly and uh, how do you know he was uh, distracted by her his own behavior you should see correct na no? how do you know somebody has disturbed you we can see we don't have to see who disturbed you we can see what what has happened to you <laughs> you can see that but what is the proof that he was disturbed you know you saw that he became angry his eyes were emanating you know hot tears his body was trembling like a snake that is uh, trampled upon by boots huh? it is said you know his lips were quivering to give some bad words or yell or something like that huh? so he had become visibly disturbed that means he he allowed his conscious awareness to be stolen away by his stepmother's negativity so here is the real point all of us we have so much negativity around us it is up to you how much you allow the negativity to overtake you like for example you are going in a boat in a ocean and the ocean is full of nala pani let us assume the dirty waters gutter waters so the boat can use those gutter waters to sail across and reach the other side of the shore or the boat can allow the gutter waters to come inside the boat once the water comes inside the boat the boat will be drowned so in this way the when the negativity is around us we open up our you know mind for receiving those negativity just like look at this vacuum cleaner the only thing vacuum cleaner does is pull out all these dirty things into itself you see that <laughs> like that it takes it sucks you see that inside that it open and see full of dirt it is exposing itself to picking up those vibrations i mean picking up those dirty things similarly imagine if our mind becomes like a vacuum cleaner huh? it just picks up all the negativity around and then you go back to your room and then you process it huh? everything what you took inside how foolishness how it is huh? so that is why krishna gives the example of the tortoise the tortoise has very soft head and soft hand and soft leg so whenever the tortoise perceives a danger what he does he takes everything inside hands legs head everything it shows the hard back so the hard back is a safe thing because even if somebody hits with a big stick also nothing will happen to the tortoise so krishna says that don't allow your consciousness to be stolen by illusion huh? and because you are going to expose the soft consciousness to bad stimuli around then you are hurting yourself you are uh, you are becoming foolish so now dhruva maharaj was in such a uh, very precarious position hmm? he was actually taking unfortunately he had taken the negativity into his system and what is the proof that he took negativity the result is he had become affected hmm? so all of you can ask yourself how do you know that the negativity in the outside world has gone into your system your behavior will show that your speech your behavior your you know thought process your contemplation uh, your intent where your energy will flow in that direction from that you can you can very easily understand so but the good news for dhruva was he had a very very noble mother she emitted a very high frequency uh, satvik and shuddha satvik she was a devotee of god huh? she always had pure words coming from her mouth huh? she always lived a very pure lifestyle heart to free from malice huh? a heart which always is thinking well wishes for others huh? 
Yeah, she had a very broad minded approach to life and she was a devotee of God. So every person carries uh, uh, some very powerful energy, huh? spiritual energy and material energy. Somebody, some people are very materialistic, some people are very spiritual minded. So the highly spiritual minded people, if you go near them, they, they emanate that vibration. Huh? So when Dhruva with his high negativity went, you have studied zero law of thermodynamics? Or it says, you know, if object A is 2000 degrees centigrade, for example, object B is 400 degrees centigrade, then the heat flows from object A to B. If object A is, you know, 800 degrees centigrade, object B is 2000, 3000 degrees centigrade, then the A gets affected by the other one, correct? No? Similarly, the people whom you are associating with this world, uh, for example, you are a devotee. And your faith in Krishna is, say, some 300 count. And uh, you encounter an atheist uh, whose faith in atheism is, you know, 1500, minus 1500 count. So you are 300 and he is minus 1500. <laughs> he affects you. Then your 300 becomes, it goes to minus. Yeah. Then, then you lose faith, correct? And if you are a devotee with very high faith in Krishna, very deep root, like Prabhupada, for example, he smashed left, right, center, all the atheist people. Yeah. Those who came, he could cut the nose and send them huh? very easily. So many of them, hmm? isn't it? Because his faith in Krishna was like enormous, like 5,000. Huh? And somebody comes with minus 200, minus 300, minus 800, everybody was finished. Huh? He could drive them back. So, but this uh, count which I am talking about, this is something which is, uh, which is a project in progress. Huh? It's an ongoing project. We can keep on increase, building our spiritual reserve. And therefore, just like you play video games, you know, when you are driving, you may make sure that you don't get hit, correct, no? Because something is coming, and then keep going, 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 like that, no? correct, no? You hit away, hit away, so that you keep going ahead, spiritual life is also like that. Okay? You keep going, don't allow negative energy into your system. Huh? And every day it's an exercise. Huh? And all the more nowadays, huh? because negative energies are coming from all directions very easily nowadays. Huh? One has to uh, very smartly deflect them away. Huh? At the same time, one has to take in positive energy. That's what Krishna is telling. Kani sarvani samyamya yukta asita matparaha vashe hiyas yendriyani tasya prajna pratishtita He is saying that engage your mind in Krishna consciousness and control your senses from absorbing neg negative energies. Hmm. So Dhruva took negative energy into his system. He suffered a little bit. But then quickly he realized that I am doing something wrong. Huh? Then he went to his mother and she put in so much positive energy into him. Huh? She said, my dear child, don't worry. Huh? You know, give up this negativity in your mind. Huh? Do not feel any malice towards your stepmother. In your life, you should think about your progress. Don't think about pulling others' legs. Huh? She said, you, if you... And then he asked, you say, I can progress in this situation. How can I progress? Huh? She said, go and meet the saintly persons. They know how to see Lord Vishnu. It is Lord Vishnu who gave the kingdom to your father. It is Lord Vishnu who came king kingdom to your grandfather, who is Swambhu Manu. And it is the same Lord Vishnu who gave the kingdom to your great-grandfather, Brahma. And if you want one, he can give you bigger than that also. So he is capable of giving anyone anything. In this creation, there is no one equal to him or greater than him. He is the father of all creatures. And he, and he also is Tameva Vatsas, uh, I'll say Vatsas Shraya Bhritti Vatsalam. I'll show that verse. Very, very beautiful verse. So, what she said, we'll recite that verse. All of you repeat there. Tameva Vatsashraya Vritya Vatsalam Tameva Vatsashraya Vritya Vatsalam Mumukshu Bhir Mrigya Padabja Paddhatim Mumukshu Bhir Mrigya Padabja Paddhatim Ananya Bhave Nija Dharma Bhavite Ananya Bhave Nija Dharma Bhavite Manasya Vasthapya Bhajasva Purusham Tameva Vatsashraya Vritya Vatsalam 
ಮುಮೋಕ್ಷುಭೇರ್ಮೃಗ್ಯ ಪದಾಬ್ಜ ಪದ್ಧತಿ ಅನನ್ಯ ಭಾವೇ ನಿಜ ಧರ್ಮ ಭಾವಿತೆ ಮನಸ್ಥಾಪ್ಯ ಭಜಸ್ವ ಪುರುಷ ತಮೇವತ್ಸಾಶ್ರಯ ಭೃತ್ಯವತ್ಸಲ ಮುಮೋಕ್ಷವೈರ್ಮೃಗ್ಯ ಪದಾಬ್ಜ ಪದ್ಧತಿ ಅನನ್ಯ ಭಾವೇ ನಿಜ ಧರ್ಮ ಭಾವಿತೆ ಮನಸ್ಥಾಪ್ಯ ಭಜಸ್ವ ಪುರುಷ ತಮೇವತ್ಸಾಶ್ರಯ ಭೃತ್ಯವತ್ಸಲ ಮುಮೋಕ್ಷಭೇರ್ಮೃಗ್ಯ ಪದಾಬ್ಜ ಪದ್ಧತಿ ಅನನ್ಯ ಭಾವೇ ನಿಜ ಧರ್ಮ ಭಾವಿತೆ ಮನಸ್ಥಾಪ್ಯ ಭಜಸ್ವ ಪುರುಷ ತಮೇವತ್ಸಾಶ್ರಯ ಭೃತ್ಯವತ್ಸಲ ಮುಮೋಕ್ಷವೈರ್ಮೃಗ್ಯ ಪದಾಬ್ಜ ಪದ್ಧತಿ ಅನನ್ಯ ಭಾವೇ ನಿಜ ಧರ್ಮ ಭಾವಿತೆ ಮನಸ್ಥಾಪ್ಯ ಭಜಸ್ವ ಪುರುಷ ಶ್ರೀ ಸೈಂಗ್ ತಮ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾಡ್ ಇವ ವತ್ಸ ಏ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಆಶ್ರಯ ಗೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಶೆಲ್ಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ಭೃತ್ಯ ವತ್ಸಲ್ ದ ಲಾಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲವರ್ ಆಫ್ ವೆರಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೋಟಿಸ್ ಇವನ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷ ಬಿ ಫಾರ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಡಿಸೈರಿಂಗ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಮೃಗ್ಯ ದೋಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಸ್ಪೈರಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷುತ್ವ ಪದಬ್ಜ ಪದ್ಧತಿ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಲಾಡ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಲೋಟಸ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ದೇ ಫಾಲೋ because they very easily attain anything they want including liberation also mumuksha be mrigya padabja padate ananya bhave nijadharma bhavite and one should practice unflinching devotional service to the, that supreme lord being situated in our constitutional position of jeeva rasarupa hoy mukta dasya so ananya bhave nijadharma bhavite manasi avastha pe place the supreme lord in your heart huh? bhajas purusham varship krishna that's what she told him read the translation my dear my dear boy you are the mic mic to the mic team my dear boy you also should take shelter of supreme personality of godhead who is very kind to his devotees person seeking liberation from the cycle of birth and death always take shelter of the lotus feet of lord in devotional service becoming purified by executing your allotted occupation just situate the supreme personality of godhead in your heart and without deviating for a moment engage always in his service just see this is this is the vibration she is carrying huh? she she is personally convinced that if you are a devotee you will be the happiest person hmm. you don't need anything else in this world if you take if you if you have krishna you have everything so that's the vibration she is carrying so one best thing that happened to dhruva is he had a good mother hmm. devotee mother he had so which means her potential was like 3000 count and he went to it uh, minus 300 minus 400 huh? she nullified his negativity and gave him lot of positive energy hmm? and told him therefore uh, how do you know that you have to see the result after associating with her he put aside his sorrow huh? and he walked towards the forest and he asked the mother how will i get lord vishnu and then she told go and meet the saintly persons huh? so they can direct you to lord vishnu and he met narada actually the mother is his first guru huh? for uh, dhruva like vartma prasha guru huh? and then he went in the forest then narada 
and uh, he was submissive. So he learned from Narada the procedure for seeing Vishnu. And then very faithfully, uh, he implemented those teachings with a determined vow. Huh? He was very, very determined. And then he, his positivity increased to such a degree. What is the proof for that? He said, Kacham Vichinvan, Abhidivya Ratnam, Swami Nkritartho Asmi Varam Nayache. He said, I came with the desire for a big kingdom after seeing your beauty and uh, seeing my connection with you. I don't feel I need anything. Huh? So his uh, impure uh, mentality of envy and uh, envy for the stepmother and desire for the kingdom, all that got washed away huh? completely because his uh, positivity increased to an uh, infinite degree. Huh? He became such a pure devotee. When he came back, he offered obeisances not, not only to his mother, he also offered obeisances to his stepmother also. Huh? The same Suruchi who taunted him, now he forgave her and uh, he offered her namaskar to her. So, Therefore, Shastras very much emphasize mm. yeah. association. Now, association is not just, uh, you know, uh, you met some saint and then you got association. No. Association means there should be some spiritual discussion, some knowledge transmission, and there should be some heart transformation. Huh? Like that happened with our Prabhupada meeting his guru, Bhagavan Sarasa Thakur. Huh? Because uh, saintly persons are carrying a higher spiritual frequency. And then you go with a lower frequency and then you have some uh, spiritual discussion, ask some questions, why this, why that and everything. And they explain and then there is a transfer of knowledge and you contemplate on the knowledge heard. Uh, and then by contemplation on pure knowledge, Nahi Jnana Sadrisham Pavitra Vidyate. Krishna says the knowledge is purifying. Uh, the knowledge purifies the lower understanding and uh, helps you develop a higher understanding. With that higher understanding, you vibrate a different frequency uh, than before. Uh, so, then that is how you also are able to connect with higher and higher frequency. Because you will see that one at a lower frequency, if he goes to a person with higher frequency, how can he connect? Immediately cannot connect because the state, therefore sometimes you switch on a TV, uh, all the black uh, screen comes. You have seen that? Like powder, hmm? black powder <laughs> screen, you have seen that. Similarly, you chant Hare Krishna, but if when you are at a lower frequency, we don't get any reciprocation. No, one, one doesn't feel happiness. Huh? One feels tired, one may sleep away, or one's mind may wander. Why mind wanders? Because our mind, where it wanders, that is our frequency. Mm-hmm. Correct, no? Yeah. So, we are trying to associate with Radha and Krishna, who are the high potential, uh, original source. Everything about Krishna is amazing. Like, uh, gopis are singing, Karasaravaruham Kanta Kamada. Krishna's hands are so powerful. If he touches somebody's head, their whole life becomes blessed. Like, you see, he touched Dhruva, and Dhruva could sing uh, Sanskrit poetry without even going to Gurukula. Mm-hmm. You know, Lord Narasimha touched the head of Prahalad and Prahalad uh, sang streams of Sanskrit poetry. That's the power of Lord's hands. And power of Lord's eyes, he looks at the dead covered boys in the bank of Yamuna after the Kaliya had poisoned the Yamuna. And all the dead boys came back to life. That is the power of his eyes. Huh? Look at the power of his feet. As Lord Ramachandra, he touches a stone with his foot and then the stone turns into Ahilya. He brought Ahilya back to life, uh, although she was she had turned, turned into a stone by a curse before. Mm, you can see that. Look at his navel, he can produce a lotus in which Brahma is born. Huh? And all the other living entities are given. So, every one of the limbs of his body is so divine. Huh? With his eyes, he is looking at the you know, spiritual world and looking at the material world and giving all the jivas a srishti, huh? saha aikshata, saha asrijata. Huh? The Upanishads say that. Simply by glancing, is creating universes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, actually, even the saintly persons draw their spiritual potential from the Supreme Lord only. Huh? Supreme Lord is the source of all spiritual potential. Huh? And uh, His potential is infinite. Huh? So, that is why those who encounter the Lord, like uh, uh, Kubja, for example, her hunchback was finished in one moment. Huh? Lord made her into a young, beautiful girl, although she was a hunchbacked woman before. Huh? Similarly, the Lord has delivered Putana. She went with so much negativity to uh, throw the negativity on the Lord, but Lord gave her the position of a mother in the spiritual world. Isn't it? So, no negativity can come near the Lord, just like no darkness can survive along with the sun. Correct, no? Where there is sun, there is no darkness. In fact, darkness means absence of sun. Hmm? They cannot co- coexist. Lord drives away all negativity. So, therefore, when we are chanting the Holy Name, we are associating with Him, but then we don't know it so well. Hmm? Because of her low frequency vibrations uh, and her mind flowing 
we are uh, reposing our mental energy to flow in useless things of this world where the mind gets distracted therefore the direct the direction we give for our uh, bodily and mental energies one has to think that's the real contemplation huh? one has to make sure that our intent is proper then the energy will flow in the right direction so uh, three a's we can remember association activity and absorption like you will see association means like we all have come here now uh, in a place like this so this is the place where high frequencies are emanated because everything is sattvic you get pure food uh, people are talking pure things here and people are respectful to each other uh, you know what uh, rules this place is pure love where uh, which is emanating from the divine couple radha and krishna and everybody is uh, connecting with the vedic literature shrimad bhagavatam bhagavad gita they are reading it understanding it purifying their consciousness elevating their consciousness so you put yourself in a positive they like iron rod put in fire becomes fiery like that so in this way when we come in good association uh, when knowledge dawns uh, then the lower understandings can be transcended you can go from a lower understanding to higher then higher to even more higher even more higher and that is why krishna emphasizes the knowledge so much transcendental knowledge and then perceiving that knowledge with, with the eyes of the knowledge we have to see the world around us and then our paradigms change the old paradigms will be discarded and the new paradigms will be accepted and as you accept a higher and higher paradigm the highest paradigm is the spiritual paradigm pure spiritual paradigm in that you know your frequencies you emanate will also be very spiritual as you go higher and higher then there is a resonance that happens when you meet with spiritual people like ramanand raya and chaitanya mahaprabhu they are resonating you can see that um, go swamis and lord chaitanya they are resonating also so when you are able to resonate with spiritual personalities then the association even for a short time can be very empowering huh? and when you are not resonating even long long association you this much knowledge you hear this much association you got but you still remains uh, you know like for example a cat or a dog even if you bring him to the class and make him sit there doesn't make any difference for them like a in bharatiya vidyapeeth college one cow used to go for four years the cow doesn't get an engineering degree huh? you know she would just go to the campus only to eat the grass and come back that's all huh? the cow is not going to get any degree similarly there are many people who may come to iskon uh, they know what they're coming for they may just go they like uh, they're anna maya kosh huh? they just uh, they'll come at the end of the program and finish the prasad and go back they'll get some benefit but not much huh? but when one can uh, you know not let our energies flow in uh, be dictated by wrong distractions huh? if you can conserve them like a tortoise huh? and then direct them uh, to higher frequency even though it's difficult in the beginning huh? you direct them towards the higher frequency because then you are going to gradually get elevated rome was not built in a day in the same manner our elevation and consciousness will happen little by little by little provided we conserve our energies and direct it in the spiritual direction shri prabhat ki i can take one or two questions before i go back to temple yeah anybody which one oh that is easy to find let's check it one of three modes of metal nature this title in the 16th chapter i think yeah yeah yes anybody Ah, yeah, yeah. Please give the mic. Mic, you can give. Hare Krishna, Pooja. Yeah, yeah. Hare Krishna, Pooja. Pooja, one question I have actually. You told about this uh, mode of guna. You told it whatever association will be there accordingly. Our thought process and desire. Association leads to activity. Like when you come here, the activities are all Krishna conscious activities. And if somebody goes to a pub or goes to a, a club, then that association will lead them to do nasty activities. And that. activity when you keep on doing more and more that leads to absorption like i told somebody is politically absorbed somebody is uh, sports absorption somebody is man woman absorption somebody has spiritual absorption so the absorption is something which eventually uh, comes by uh, the thoughts accruing in the mind and the thoughts accrue more and more based on activities we do yeah yes so the question is like this because we are doing uh, 
shifting paradigm immediately for Correct. example we working in office also at the same time we doing spirituality also yeah. so the more, so whenever we try to do office work we will think about the office and whenever we do the our bhakti work we try to think about the bhakti yeah. but the problem is coming when whenever we doing the bhakti but the examples are coming from the office for example yeah. we reading the some books so we have to give some example about to explain those points so instead of coming the bhagavatam point the points coming from the office tip no so that, that, no, that that is because you generally speak what you find tasty that is your taste so if i have material taste then even if i sit to give a spiritual lecture then i will speak more about the material things no? so if i have a strong spiritual taste even in a material atmosphere when i go i will keep speaking spiritual things like prabhupada for example he went to america you know the american situation didn't influence him rather he influenced the situation around him you know by speaking about krishna by speaking about vrindavan by speaking about chanting holy name because it is inside out correct no it was not outside in so if you say that you have two types of ex- uh, interactions you are doing one in the office one in the voice if office examples and things like that come more that means uh, you are you are connecting with that frequency more more strongly and you are drawing more and more energy from there in that so and then uh, when you come to spiritual line also if that is dominating this one that is because that absorption is increasing more so that then you need uh, some people need uh, uh, based on their purva sanskaras uh, if purva sanskaras we don't have so much of uh, uh, back la um, so much of spark of lot of spiritual vibrations then now we have to do lot of homework huh? like for example when i i was when i was a small boy we, we have seen so many movies like sampurna ramayana like we have seen dashavatara we have seen uh, hundreds of movies like that some movies i have seen 10 10 times also and also we have gone to the and we will only choose spiritual movies only we go and you go to the temple and spend lot of time in temple even now those old vibrations are very deeply there in the mind like you know the ringing of the bell the fragrance of the chandan the darshan of the lord and the gopuram uh, the gopuram in which all the leelas of the lord are present and uh, going for sacramentating in the temple spending time in the temple hearing katha so these impressions are very deep and they overpower uh, the other vibrations around so i might be sitting in a materialistic place in a in the middle of a railway station or an airport or something like that it hardly matters because my old those spiritual vibrations actually overtake the mind so therefore even if i meet somebody in the airport i will only tell about krishna only to him correct no so we have to increase our inner vibrations so uh, how do we increase? that's one of the reason why we go for yatras and all nowadays many many brahmacharis take their boys to ahobilam they take their boys to melukottai because those places are places where acharyas and many many vaishnavas have come and performed a lot of devotion service so they carry tremendous vibrations we just have to put ourselves there take a bath in the pond there you know take darshan of the deities there hear katha that happened there you know hear about the lord hear about the devotees but one big problem is when we are hearing those kathas also our mind is distracted in between phone calls come you know there also people are sometimes doing official work when they go also uh, like one uh, uh, brahmacharya was asking that prabhu ji why uh, you know we are not able to swiftly advance in spiritual life i told him in tulasi arti i have seen him always talking with some devotee and he is going around the jani kane chapa pani uh, i said you are reciting oh tulasi devi you are taking away millions of sins which i have committed in the past like even killing of a cow or a brahman huh? you know you are taking away those sinful acts i am grateful to you and you are also giving me krishna prem hmm? so you should be grateful in the heart when you are singing the song but when he is going around every day he connects with somebody some brahmacharya and they both are catching the hand and talking you know ye kaise chal raha ho kaise chal raha that means he takes tulasi marani very cheaply then how will you advance so therefore the performance of the devotional activities has to be done in a very therefore kintu aadarat anudinam kalsaiva jushta it says aadarat means respectful so one should perform each limb of devotional service very respectfully so one of the things we can do is especially deity worship hmm? actually if you go and get flowers in the market for the deity make some garland you know and clean the altar and decorate the altar Uh, and one is closely associating with the lord in temple also when you go you can do a backup of the uh, lord's uh, vessels and everything you know though, so these kind of activities which are closely performed with the lord 
these things will increase our spiritual vibrations. Uh, so, uh, in, in, uh, it's not that uh, somebody has uh, no spiritual vibration. We all have both in the mind. Uh, so, we have to increase the spiritual vibrations more and more. And then gradually, the other, other thing will be driven up. Uh, it will take some time. But uh, we have to watch where, where is my mind flowing. Uh, how is my conscious awareness? Is it being dictated by Maya? Or is it being uplifted by Krishna? So we want to uplift the conscious awareness. Then you don't have to worry about mind control at all. Mind, you can tell mind, do what you want. I'm going to worry about awareness. Conscious awareness. Because conscious awareness is what makes the mind pure or impure. So the conscious awareness should not be allowed to be... Like you all are going in a train. Will you just go to Lonavala and drink water from a tap? Will you do that? You won't do that. You know, it may be contaminated water. So you buy a bisleri and take very carefully. So whatever you intake, you are very careful. What you eat, what you drink. If that is so, what about conscious awareness? What we take in should be careful or not? Is then we have to be careful what we are taking in. But we go to the Wi-Fi and then see any nonsense thing we see. We are actually putting poison into the system. And that is how we aggravate our situation. Actually, in, when we were young, you know, in, in school days also, we, what to speak of mobile, we had no landline also in those days. Landline came, after the mobile came, TV was also not there. In fact, TV was there when I went to college days. Uh, I was so foolish, I told my father that, Mom, mom is just idling at home. You give her a TV, she can watch Ramayana. I only told him. <laughs> then the TV came at home, black and white TV. So there the exposure to Maya was much less. So then we were given time and uh, consciousness to focus on spiritual things. But now what has happened, when children are very tender, there is too much of bombardment of Maya. Did you see our UK president uh, recently said that you cannot... Uh, children cannot carry mobile to school. You saw that? Yes. Yeah, How many of you saw that? A few have seen that. You have that video? I have to huh? I it. Uh, you forward it. You can put in uh, uh, this also. Chat. Uh, chat also. You can show it later. You can show them. There are two videos. One is UK president saying another one is the Facebook uh, meta owner being chastised, practically chastised eh, by uh, many group of parents. Because some parents say that the children have committed suicide because of the Instagram. Yeah, so much of so there are two different videos. Both are very good videos. So you can see those videos. You can see. So the bombardment is something which children are not able to withstand now. But which children will withstand if they get good association? Huh? Because they will get to see, uh, you know, what is what what is the black sheep? They will get get to see that. Hmm? So, but uh, if those who are innocent. They'll be misguided and they'll be misled and they'll be thrown into a downward spiral. And then they are plunged into dirtier and dirtier consciousness and they'll get a lot of kicks in Tamaguna. Actually, Tamaguna life is very painful. That's why people commit suicide. Why they commit suicide? Tamaguna life is a very painful life. Tamaguna Rajaguna is a very painful life. Sataguna life means Sukham and Jnanam, knowledge and happiness. And when you go to Vishuddha Sattva, you'll be floating in bliss yeah? as one goes beyond it. You wonder, you know, why to go to spiritual world? Even this world is spiritual world, you'll feel. One can feel so happy as you go higher. So it's like, you know, a helicopter is up in the sky. It has no problem. But when a helicopter comes in a ocean, uh, below, below, then the ocean waves will hit it. Correct, no? Similarly, as we come lower and lower, then, only, then we get hit by Rajaguna, Tamaguna. So we have to always, uh, therefore, morning to night, we, we have to be very alert, like the tortoise example we gave, isn't it? Uh, what stimuli I am allowing into my system. Mm -hmm. So one has to be very conscious of it. One cannot be very casual or careless. But what happens with us, sometimes uh, our consciousness is low. And that is the time, it's like a person with a low immunity going to a sanatorium where people are coughing uh, tuberculosis. Uh, he also has low immunity. He also goes to areas which are dangerous. Then he immediately contagious disease catches him. Right now. Then he also suffers like that. So. Even if I am of low immunity, low immunity means spiritually weak, then I should throw myself into the association of high energy people. Huh? That's what Dhruva Maharaj did. Dhruva Maharaj have had low, he was a low in spiritual quotient. But then when he met his mother, she protected him and uplifted his consciousness, correct? No? So we need uplifting association. Hmm? There was one question that side. Where is it? Yeah. 
Hey, car is ready. You can order. Uh, we will leave in five minutes. Huh? Okay. Yes. Hare Krishna. My doubt is that uh, you said that when uh, two devotees when meet when they are meeting, they have resonance and uh, they will. How can we develop that uh, resonativeness when we we are in a pure devotee association? Yeah. And that uh, resonance develops over a period of time. Like, for example, first time uh, when we met our spiritual master and others, you know, we, our mind more or less studies the person. He looks like this, he speaks like this. You know, we are more or less emotional in the beginning. We don't hear what he says. We are making judgments on our own. That's the way most of the people made the uh, saintly people also in the beginning. And then when you keep going, Regularly, then you say, oh, I like the Kirtan, I like Prasad. You know, these kind of things you develop like. And you continue going. And then you slowly start hearing the words. Then after hearing the words, some, most of them we don't understand what is being spoken. And then, but when you continue coming, then after some time you start understanding what is being spoken. Then after some time you not only understand, you start contemplating what was spoken. And then, uh, not only just contemplating, you start ascertaining, yes, what he said about this is very true, I can see it in the world around me, it's true. And then you start deeply thinking about what was said, and then you start up implementing some things in your life, and then you start seeing change. That's what I told you, spiritual discussion, knowledge transmission, heart transformation. Huh? That is called association. Huh? And then when your heart transforms, you see positive benefits start uh, coming in your life, then the faith in the saintly person increases. Huh? Then you hear more, hear more, read more, hear Prabhupada lectures, read Prabhupada books, then you go higher and higher. And that is the time your frequency will match with the spiritual wisdom being given. And that is why you find some devotees become very serious devotees. You understand, no? So, um, main thing is increment in knowledge, spiritual knowledge. Therefore, hearing is very much stressed. Come for the weekly program, read Prabhupada books, you know, hear Prabhupada lectures. So, by doing these things, as knowledge dawns, then the impurities are driven out. Prema bhakti aha hoite avidya vanashtha. Divya jnana hride kashito. So the divya jnana gives light to the heart and darkness is driven away. That's where we begin. And then along with the knowledge, we also take prasad, we take part in all the kirtans, haratis, everything. And, and also this good association uh, makes us stronger to face the world when we go out. All right? Shri Prabhupada ki.